Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're glad to have you along with us. Also happy to be joined this afternoon by the Mayor of London, Ed Holder, the Warden of Middlesex County, Kathy burkhardt Jessen, the Acting Medical Officer of Health at the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Alex Summers, and Carol Young-Ritchie, Executive Vice President, Interim Clinical Officer and Chief Nursing Officer at London Health Sciences Centre. We're also happy to be joined by the media this afternoon, and uh, we do know you have questions. So if you would like to submit them, and we'd like to ask them, just click on the question mark inside the text bubble here on Microsoft Teams. If you could indicate your name, your media outlet, and who your question is for. And finally, a welcome to those joining us this afternoon on Rogers Television, as well as the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel. Listeners on Global News Radio 980 CFPL, and those who are tuning in this afternoon on the CTV London website. Let's begin with our opening statements, and we'll start today with Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Well, thanks, Dan. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Shine the Light campaign uh, and the London Abused Women's Centre on this Wear Purple Day. As you can see, we're all dressed for the occasion, as are Londoners of all ages. It's important to see so many people support this critically important campaign. To any woman or girl who has experienced or is experiencing violence, know that there's help available, an entire community that is standing in solidarity with you. I take this issue, as does my family, uh, very seriously for very personal reasons. So that's why uh, Wear Purple Day is so important. And, and frankly, it's an issue that we need to acknowledge and support the London Abused Women's Centre and for all organizations that help women and girls who are experiencing violence. Where COVID's concerned, London Middlesex remains one of a select few regions across Ontario where case counts remain largely flat or continue to decline even. Our moving seven day average is actually at about the same level it was back in mid-August. I can't stress enough what a game changer it will be, not only for London Middlesex, but for all of Ontario to have shots approved for the five to 11 year old ages. Here in our region, uh, this age group has by far the rate at the highest rate of active cases per capita. And here's another compelling statistic. There are 21 active cases in that age group, almost twice as many as the 12 to 24 age group. The major difference, of course, is that the 12 to 24 year olds have been vaccinated while the, in the main, while the five to 11 year old age group is still not eligible. Once they are eligible, not only will it cut down on infections in that age group, it also lessens the likelihood of breakthrough cases in vaccinated parents or other close contacts and just cuts down on spread overall. I truly hope that Health Canada will approve this age group for vaccination before the end of the month, meaning thousands of children could be fully vaccinated just in time for Christmas. And what a Christmas gift that would be. In the meantime, and as I've said multiple times before while we're waiting, and regardless of your age, please get the flu shot. I took mine last Wednesday, and I'll tell you, it was as simple and straightforward as you might imagine. Anything we can do to lessen the strain on our healthcare system, especially in the midst of a pandemic, is worthwhile. And that's exactly what the flu shot will do. So please take some time to book an appointment to get that shot as soon as you can. I'm sure Dr. Summers may have more to add to the importance of the flu shot, but in the meantime, protect yourself, protect your family, and help lessen the load on our healthcare heroes. Well, that's all for me. Over to you, Warden Kathy. Great. Well, thank you so much for that, Mayor Ed. And I too got my um, flu shot about 10 days ago, and it was easy peasy, and I would encourage everybody to do the same. Today, I wear purple, as do my colleagues, in support of the Shine a Light campaign. In 2020, Middlesex County Council formally recognized the Women's Caucus of Middlesex County as a formal caucus of, count of council. Being recognized like this, we can make sure that issues, policies, and programs are thoroughly evaluated to include a gender lens focus and to further advocate for women in our municipality. The Women's Caucus has heard many stories from women across Middlesex who have shared their stories of lost jobs and income, childcare struggles, and how managing the managing of households has become an even bigger burden during the pandemic as extra responsibilities have been added, including 
anything, but of course not limited to homeschooling and caring for elderly relatives due to risk factors related to COVID. For women in abusive situations, their natural supports and places that they might have accessed resources or respite were closed. This coupled with partners working from home and having additional stress created dangerous situations in the peak of the pandemic. The number of high risk women seeking shelter increased as home situations became more and more abusive. The, abil the ability to seek out support was compromised with partners being at home and having more control of comings and goings as well as controlling virtual access. Women are incredible creatures. It has been well documented and studied that in the midst of crisis, women can cope quite well balancing and managing many demands. Of course, they handle it better with healthy supports, but we cope. As the crisis um, of the pandemic subsides and the influences of the increased uh, stressors begin to surface, we see the fallout of mental health and the need for ongoing support to navigate the many emotions and impacts of abuse. In Middlesex County, women can be and are supported by the Women's Rural Resource Centre in Strathroy. At the WRRC during the pandemic, they have seen a 50% increase for the women's counselling program. And in the children's counselling program that is accessed by kids and caregivers, demand has increased by 45%. WRRC offers transition support as well, and they are seeing demands on housing, legal needs, and one-on-one -on -one supports with community clients increasing upwards of 50%. I think what is most troubling is because of ministry protocols during the height of the pandemic when WRRC's shelter, the, the numbers that uh, WRRC's num, um, shelters decreased. This begs the question, where did these women go? WRRC is now running at full capacity and is having to refer women to other shelters outside of their home communities as requests for shelter space is far above their capacity. And that's just at the Women's Rural Resource Centre in Strathroy in Middlesex County. But it is the same story across our region, our province and our country. Middlesex County, through our social service and library departments, manages community supports through our Community Navigator program. And this is a great first step for people seeking out supports through our community. Um, our Community Navigator can help with housing, securing employment, education, accessing mental health and addiction supports, the list goes on. Library branches um, are safe and welcoming spaces. I encourage people in need to reach out to the program through our uh, library branches or directly through our community navigator. So what can you do for the women in your life? How can you support women that are in a vulnerable situation? We have an upcoming provincial election. So ask the candidates who come to your door what resources they will invest in the safety for women and children. Demand that of them. If you believe a woman or a girl is in an unsafe environment, speak with her. Reach out and let her know that she is not alone and that there is help. Share local resources with her. Understand the complexities of being in an abusive relationship. If you believe that a woman is in danger, call 911. If you are in need of, in need of support or assistance, reach our Community nav Navigator at 519-245-8237 extension 4030. The Women's Real Resource Centre in Strathroy can be accessed through 519-245-1526, or if you are in crisis, call 1-800-265-5390. Always remember, there are resources out there and you will always be supported. Over to you, Dr. Summers. Thank you. Warden Cathy and Mayor Holder. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. A pleasure to be with you this afternoon, as always. Today is Wear Purple Day. Purple is a symbol of courage, survival, and honor, and has come to symbolize the fight to end women abuse. 
intimate partner violence is a critical public health issue that has been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2020 and 2021, violence against women's services in the Middlesex and London region have reported significant increases in the number of contacts they've had with individuals experiencing gender-based violence. The Middlesex London Health Unit, our staff, our leadership, our board, all of us stand in solidarity with those women who experience gender-based violence. The health unit offers home and community-based visiting programs with services delivered by registered nurses who have the knowledge and skills to provide support to individuals experience violencing, experiencing violence in their intimate relationships. And if individuals are interested in learning more about these services, please call the health unit at 519-663-5317 or by visiting our website at healthunit.com. There are a number of other crisis supports available to people in the Middlesex London area who require assistance and we are grateful for them. We are glad to stand in solidarity today uh, as we wear purple to acknowledge gender based violence and violence against women. On the COVID-19 front, case counts in the London and Middlesex region remain low. However, case counts in our neighboring jurisdictions and in other parts of the province are beginning to rise. We are experiencing just over 100 active cases in our region and the highest incident rate is amongst those under the age of 12 and amongst those over the age of 12, the incident rate is highest amongst those that are unvaccinated. Amongst those who are 12 and over, over the last four weeks, the incident rate of COVID-19 amongst unvaccinated individuals is over five times higher than those amongst the incident rate amongst those that are fully vaccinated. Information from the COVID-19 science table released on Friday highlighted that the risk and rate and probability of uh, being infected with COVID-19 was six times higher amongst those that were unvaccinated. The risk of hospitalization was 11 times higher amongst those that were unvaccinated and the risk of being hospitalized and in the ICU was 26 times higher amongst unvaccinated individuals when compared to vaccinated individuals. Although we've had the vaccine available for many months now, the urgency for which people who are eligible should get vaccinated remains. This pandemic, although we are so far ahead of where we were a year ago, remains and can only be ended through the ongoing efforts to vaccinate those who have not yet received a dose. We anticipate further announcements on the approval of vaccination for those under the ages of 12, specifically those 5 to 11, uh, will be made by Health Canada within the next one to two weeks. We stand ready at the Middlesex London Health Unit to rapidly begin to deploy those vaccines into the arms of those, those kids. And we really do ask if you're a parent or guardian of a child between the ages of five to 11 year old, begin having those conversations around the opportunities that vaccination will bring. It will be great not only for those kids, but also for neighbors, family members, and the entire Middlesex and London community. Again, we are so grateful that the vaccine is available and we highlight for those it's safe, it's effective, and it's the single best thing you can do for your health right now. The flu vaccine is also readily available to those over the ages of six months in our community. Uh, we heard from the mayor and the warden of the ease in which they got vaccinated and I can attest to that as well. Don't miss an opportunity to protect yourself and to protect your neighbors as we go into the respiratory season. We're aiming for a holiday season in the next number of months that is joyful and one in which we can celebrate with family and friends. Getting vaccinated both for COVID-19 and for the flu is how we're going to get there. Thanks so much as always for joining us today. I'm going to hand things over to Carol Young Ritchie from London Health Sciences Centre. Thank you Dr. Summers and good afternoon everyone and thanks for having me to share an update on the COVID-19 situation at London Health Sciences. As of this morning, we are caring for 12 COVID-19 positive inpatients, with seven of those being in critical care. On a more positive note, I'm pleased to share that we currently do not have any COVID-19 positive patients in our children's hospital. I want to begin today by acknowledging the capacity challenges at our, at our partners uh, that our partners are experiencing at St. Thomas Elgin Hospital, at St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital, have been facing as a result of COVID-19. A sudden increase in unvaccinated COVID-19 patients has created significant pressure on their ability to care for critically ill patients. To ensure, to ensure that the level of care remains available to everyone who requires it, LHSC has accepted fewer than five critical care patient transfers from St. Thomas. We are not, while we have not 
yet been asked to receive additional patient transfers, we are ensuring we maintain appropriate capacity at both University and Victoria Hospital to allow for that should that support be needed. Our region has been fortunate to, experiencing, to experience relatively stable case numbers over the last while, and I think seeing these case counts increase dramatically in, in a neighbouring community and the pressure that places on healthcare systems serves as a strong reminder that the pandemic is not yet over. We continue to do everything we can to prevent the spread, including, including following public health guidelines and getting vaccinated. Vaccination adds another important layer of protection against COVID-19, reducing the risk of transmission and the likelihood of severe illness or death or if infected. Please, if you are eligible and have not already done so, get vaccinated at your first opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Carol Young Ritchie, Dr. Alex Summers, Kathy Burkhart Jessen, and Mayor Holder. Um, all right, we do have uh, some questions in the queue, so why don't we get to those right away? We'll start with the first. And the first question is for Carol Young Ritchie. It's from Jane Sims at the London Free Press. Um, we understand LHSC has received two patients from St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital. Do you expect to be taking on more? And how does that affect capacity here in London? Thank you for that question. And we have received uh, less than five patients to LHSC and we are prepared if we need to take more patients. Critical care beds are a resource and we wanna make sure everybody has opportunity for those resources across the province. So we are, we are maintaining our capacity. So we are able to take those patients if indeed St. Thomas needs us to take them. Thank you very much. Let's go to our next question. And this one is for Dr. Summers. And it is also uh, related to this issue and it's from Jane Sims at the Free Press. Uh, Dr. Summers, given the surge in cases in southwestern public health's region, is the Middlesex London Health Unit helping to shore up contact tracing efforts in the southwestern public health region? Thanks for that question, Jane. Uh, at this time, the Middlesex London Health Unit has not been asked to assist. Um, however, of course, we are always eager and willing, if possible, to assist our neighbours. Um, at this time, we've we've not been asked to assist in case investigation and contact tracing efforts uh, in any of our neighboring regions to date. Thank you very much. OK, let's go. We've got another question from Jane Sims and follow up. Uh, Dr. Summers, the provincial statistics today show that Middlesex London has reached 92 percent on first doses. Understanding that the provincial count is different than the local count, how close do you think the Middlesex London region is to that coverage rate? Great question, Jane. The uh, the numbers that the province uh, reports are always slightly different than ours. Uh, we use a more accurate denominator, which means our population estimates are a little bit more accurate, so that uh, population coverage is always a little bit lower for us. Uh, we will be releasing our most updated vaccine coverage numbers tomorrow, uh, but I think where we're on track for is just under, and by just, I mean just under 90% of those 12 and older in our region who've received at least one dose. We're nearly at that 90% mark, uh, but I think uh, the report tomorrow will lately outline that we're just under. Uh, so watch for that on the uh, dashboard tomorrow. All right, thank you very much. Yes, we are Tuesdays when the dashboard gets updated. It's a date we all, all look forward to uh, every week on the vaccination coverage information. All right, the next question comes to us from Steve Young at CTV London and News Talk 1290 CJBK. And this one is for Mayor Holder. Uh, Mayor Holder, what is your response to hearing a City of London employee has been charged with arson in relation to the clubhouse fire at the River, River Road Golf Course? Hey Steve, thanks for that. Like most Londoners, I was shocked and, and deeply concerned by the fire at River Road uh, when that occurred. It's such an act of senseless violence that have put some of London's most vulnerable people at greatest risk. We take these allegations against our staff member very seriously. We hold all employees to a high level of accountability in their service to our community. As such, we will cooperate fully in the process with our London Police Service. Our focus now, though, will be to continue to work with our community partners to identify an option to ensure we can provide an Indigenous-led temporary shelter site for the winter. That's our next focus. Thank you very much, Mayor Holder. All right, let's go to the next question. 
Um, all right, this is also for Mayor Holder and it's from James Sharani at CBC London and it's a, a similar question Mayor Holder so I'll just go through it uh, because there's a little bit more information at the end that James is looking for. Uh, as far as what your reaction is to the news of the charges you, you've spoken to that but James would also like to know if an alternative site has been established for the proposed winter shelter for Indigenous people who are experiencing unsheltered homelessness. Well, James, thanks very much. Much like the uh, comments I gave to Steve, um, we've expressed our deep concern about the fire uh, at River Road and obviously the allegations against one of our city uh, employees is something that we take exceptionally seriously. And it's because we do uh, hold our staff to a high level of accountability in, uh, in their service to London and to, our, and to Londoners. And it's why I indicated that we will cooperate fully in the process to um, go a little further with this um, in terms of an alternate site. I can tell you that our city staff uh, since the fire uh, have been working uh, quite uh, quite significantly to support our indigenous uh, lead shelter. Uh, and there are a number of options that are being reviewed today. And it's my hope that uh, in the relatively near future, we're going to be able to announce uh, some uh, specifics around uh, what those options can be. But we do that in conjunction with our Indigenous community and our various partners as we work to provide this uh, winter uh, relief program. Thank you very much, Mayor Holder, for those comments. And that does bring us to the end of our questions for this afternoon's virtual media briefing. Thank you to the media who are in attendance. Also like to thank uh, Dr. Alex Summers, Carol Young Ritchie, Warden Burkhart Jessen and Mayor Holder for joining us with your information and your insights as well as we continue to navigate the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. That will do it for this afternoon's virtual media briefing. We'll be back with our next briefing that's coming up on Thursday afternoon. That will be the uh, 18th of November, if you can believe that as time flies so quickly. Uh, between now and Thursday afternoon, have a great rest of your Monday and so long for now.